Now I've got to admit, I'm kind of scared to make today's video because in today's video, I'm gonna be moving these guys. And I think as a lot of you guys know, I've had struggles in the past with managing my cattle. For those of you who don't know what the deal is, about two weeks ago, I got those five Scottish Highland cows, or cattle. It's actually two cows, two heifers, and a steer. And I know I've been driving some of you guys crazy by calling them Highlanders, but that's just what people around here seem to call them. And when my Highland cattle first showed up on the farm, they actually broke away from the initial paddock I was trying to keep them in. And they were running wild throughout my permaculture orchard. My first 24 hours as a cattleman was kind of a disaster. But over the last two weeks, I've worked very hard with the cattle and they have definitely become trained to the electric poly rope fence that I have them fenced off in. But now they've been sitting in the same spot now for almost 10 days, which you don't necessarily want to do. Ideally, what I want to do on our farm is intensively rotationally graze these cattle, meaning that I'm gonna move them from one paddock to another day after day, doing daily pasture moves. Now I'm fully confident that with time and practice, moving them daily will become an easy thing. But today is day one of that attempt. And I just hope I don't screw the whole dang thing up. So let's do this. Oh good, it looks like the geese are migrating away from where the cattle were. I saw them out there earlier and they were chewing on the unelectrified rope. That could have given them a rude surprise if they bit the wrong cable. You know, so far, the cattle have been inside a paddock that's about a half an acre large. And they've had water in there. And over the last couple of days, I even set up this temporary smart fence in here just so that they could get used to the smart fence. It's been electrified, so in case they decide to test it, they've learned that that also carries the charge. Now over here on the right-hand side, or the, technically the north side of my pasture, I've built a new paddock. It's about the same size, maybe slightly smaller. Um, but the difference is I'm gonna divide this paddock into fits. And so what you're gonna see here is essentially five days of grazing. Uh-oh, Toby's mixing it up with the cattle. I don't want him to get them riled up yet. So for example, they're gonna spend the next 24 hours in here, then another 24 hours in here, and then another 24 hours, and then another 24 hours, just right on down the line. This might still be too big for them. You know, what I'm gonna be watching is how quickly they graze all of this down and ultimately want to move them to fresh pasture. Like when you compare this pasture that the cattle have been on, and you see it, you can see it's been pretty well eaten down. There's still plenty of grass, so it's not like I'm overgrazing here, but there's also a lot of manure in here. So what I'm gonna have to do is disconnect the electric, pull the water, and bring it over to this new one here. And then I'm gonna have to carefully open that gate and let them get through. When I'm doing that part of the work to move them into the next pasture, that's honestly the biggest area of risk. Like I'm worried that I might lose the cattle back up the hill again like happened last time. But I've got a couple secret weapons up my sleeve and I'm gonna use those secret weapons to get those cattle to follow with me. What I've really found interesting is just how much of my work with ducks and geese over the years translates into what I need to do with the cattle. It's slightly different and it's at a much greater scale, but a lot of the concepts translate through. Okay, they're happily munching in here, doing what they should be doing. They seem rather unconcerned by my presence. A big part of that's because they've gotten so used to me being around them that, you know, here I am about, I don't know, 30 feet away from the black one and they're not concerned at all. I've also successfully opened up a hole on that side. Now comes the tough part. What I need to do is unhook that reel, unroll it all the way down this line and create an opening so that the cattle can go through the opening that I made already in the new paddock. Once they're all through, I can close it up and they'll be in their new paddock and I can take down the old paddock. Right here is where things could really go awry because as I pull down that rope that's on the back side there, they could go running up the hill. And if that's the case, it puts my tree orchard in jeopardy. And I could spend like a whole nother week chasing these guys around the orchard. And I've got a lot of other things to do around the farm before the snow starts to fly. And so I don't want to spend my time doing that. But luckily I've got a secret weapon on my hand. Can anybody guess what this is? Wish me luck. I'm going to go take down that fencing now.
Hey, girl. They definitely know something is up. The other four are kind of confused, but this one, the blonde one, she knows something's going on. Yep, they definitely know something is up here. This one, I'm worried she's gonna sneak out the back. The other four are staying close together. Spooker. Come on, Toby. Toby, hey, come on back. We don't want to spook him. Oh no, come on. No, 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 no. Son of a gun. <sighs> That's exactly what I didn't want to have happen. Happened. Mm. Come on, cows. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, cows. Well, this has turned into a disaster. My little alfalfa cubes have nothing compared to the acres of fresh, lush grass we have out there on the pasture. Ugh. I guess I'm gonna have to try again tomorrow. You know, that really is the thing about learning something. When you think you know, you usually don't know. It's only when you know you don't know that you actually know. And there is still a lot I don't know about raising these cattle. Go. 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 Come on, Kyaus. Come on, Kyaus. Come on, Kyaus. Come on, Kyaus. Good boy. You're being a good puppy. Grass puppy, that is. Come on. There you go, buddy. 
get your next one. Almost there. Come on, cows. Come on, cows. Hey, cows. Hey, cows. Got more treats for you. So I'm gonna give myself a partial victory here on this one. I've successfully gotten four of my five cattle back into a pen. What I'm finding is if, as long as I don't spook them and they don't have like a strong need to run, they're gonna stay with inside this fencing. But fortunately, I have this one gal over here who was the one who was stubborn and wouldn't come in in the first place and was the reason that they escaped. She doesn't want to come in. She's staying close to the fence. I mean, she's pretty close to me even. Pretty close to Toby over there. But she gets a little nervous. Come on, girl. Want to come with me? I don't want to make her run. Toby's been surprisingly helpful, even though I've been worried he might screw things up sometimes. But I don't want to spook her and have her run off then have the rest of the herd run off. But I also want to be careful because I just saw her like rubbing up against this apple tree here, for example. You even see some of the breaking. It's okay, they're about ready to be pruned anyway, but I'd rather not do it aggressively. Come on, gal. You wanna go slow? I'm gonna go slow. I was able to lead the other guys in here. She's much flightier. Definitely much more of a scaredy cat compared to the other cattle we've got. She's one of the younger ones too. So I don't know. Oh, please stay off that black locust tree. Is that an apple tree you're chewing on? I'd love to convince her to come down and then want to go in with the rest of our herd. See if we can do it here. This will be one last attempt. Go very slow. Toby, don't spook her. I'm hoping the gate one last time. This fence is hot right now, so I gotta be careful. Everybody else is trying to escape as soon as I do this. I'm not going to let that happen. My already previous screw up. I'm not going to try anything today. I'm just going to let them all hang out here. Maybe later tonight, I'll try to coax her back in. I mean, she's going to be lonely. Cattle are herd animals, and they don't like to be away from the rest of their herd. Heck, it wouldn't even shock me if she ended up trying to jump the fence at some point. 
I'll just leave her be. It's not like she's gonna do too much damage. There's plenty of grass for her to eat around here. So we'll let things be and see how it goes. I continue to learn more and more that patience is like the most important thing when it comes to working with cattle. Mm.